everyone, it's time for part two of the Q&A. Last time we talked a lot about all my personal stories and matters. And this time I'm going to answer all your questions regarding violin playing. So let's get started right away with the first question. The first question is, Julia, do you have a few tricks to keep the basic practice like skills more interesting? Yes, I surely do have some tips. So first of all, what you could do is to practice different bowings. A lot of you are practicing your skills only with low notes. And I am already getting tired while I'm doing it myself. But what you could do as well is to, for instance, one of the things that you could do is to try to add slurs. You can add all types of slurs, two note slurs, like I just showed you, three note slurs, four note, six note, eight notes, or maybe you could even try twelve notes. Or you could try even more than that, 16. So basically add as many as you would like. You can do it, uh, you can play 24 note slurs. So try all the different slurs and I will tell you it gets a lot more challenging when you're adding the slurs and you will practice a great bowing technique. Because in a lot of pieces you have to play a lot of notes. And you really want to make sure that you make all of those notes on one bow stroke. Next to that, you can also practice different bow strokes. Picado. You can start with four notes. And then you can start two notes. And then one. And then you can also practice staccato. And then you can also practice different rhythms. And then you can do that also with different bow strokes. So basically you can make it as difficult or as easy as you would like it to be. I do think skills get a lot more interesting if you add all these elements to it. Also you can try with a metronome starting in slow speed and then getting gradually faster. And so on. That also makes skills a lot more fun. I normally put the metronome between 50 and 60 BPM and then I go over a lot of patterns. I have another video, Advanced Skill Practice, that goes over a lot of the patterns that I'm using when I practice my own skills. So now let's go to the next question. How much time should we contribute for violin per day as a beginner? Well, that's a difficult question because it really does depend on your life. For instance, if you are a nurse and a mom with two little children and um, you are working uh, on regular hours and you also have to do all the housework at the site, probably you won't be able to practice every single day. But if you maybe are retired, you can have a much more relaxed practice schedule. Of course, if you would like to optimize the improvements that you will make, you have to be very consistent with your practice. And please remember that I'm using the word consistent for a reason. So I don't say practice a lot, but be consistent. It is really better to practice five minutes every day than to practice one day, one hour, and then all the other days you don't practice at all. So try to put a few minutes every day aside for your practice. In the best case scenario, you practice between two and three hours. But let's be honest, most of us won't be able to practice that much every day. Most of us will be happy if we have half an hour in our day to practice. And I do think half an hour is a great amount of time to practice. Half an hour to one hour, you can get so much done in this time. But even if you have less time, I really want to encourage you to use that time for your practice. Because even in a few minutes a day, you can see improvements. And actually, you will be surprised if you practice 10 minutes a day, how much you will improve. It is, in the end, practicing the violin 
violin playing in general, is a very physical skill. And if you look at it, for instance, if you would stretch every day for 10 minutes, you will see a difference. For instance, if you would stretch your hamstrings every day for 10 minutes, you do see a difference. And the same is true for violin playing. If you play every day for 10 minutes, use your fingers and basically strengthen the brain areas needed to play the violin. That will help you a lot. So I would say as an answer to the question, how much time should you devote? Whatever time you can put in consistently. So if that is five minutes, be it five minutes. If it is 30 minutes, it should be 30 minutes. And if it is one hour, it should be one hour. Of course, the more the better, but I wouldn't go a lot above three hours because then you can get a lot of health problems like um, for instance, your neck could hurt and things like that. So I would say the more the better, but consistency is key and not the amount. And please, definitely feel encouraged to learn the violin no matter how much time you have. Because time is not the only thing which is important, it is consistency over the years. And uh, it would be better to start now and have a few minutes every day and maybe practice more later if you have more time, than not practice at all now and think like, oh, I will start to play the violin 10 years later or I, or I will restart in five years. Because you can make a lot of progress in five years if you would just practice a few minutes every day. So next question, how many years will it take to master the violin? Unfortunately, it will take more than a lifetime. I don't think everybody truly can master the violin. But um, if you would say master level would be those who are playing in uh, concert halls, I would say more than a lifetime for regular people like us. <laughs> I mean... Most people who reach the master level of violin playing, they start at a very young age and are practicing rigorously for six hours a day since they are extremely young. And I don't think that many of us will ever reach that level. But if you talk about mastery more in the sense of that I could play in an orchestra or a band, I would say for most people starting as an adult, it will be about five years. And um, yeah. Please don't believe all the YouTube videos you see. You see a lot of progress videos. Average progress video on YouTube is not the average progress you will make. The average progress is a lot slower. And uh, I've seen this with my students and that's not because I'm a bad teacher, but because YouTube, you know, you always see the best stories. You also see the stories of those who make like a million dollars in like three weeks or something like that. But let's be honest, for most of us are not going to make 1 million in three weeks, we are not going to learn the violin in one year and we are not going to, you know, uh, do fitness for like two months and be have a six pack. I mean, if you would believe YouTube, it would take you only one year to learn the violin. But practically, most of my students, if they practice consistently, like three quarters at least a day for five years, they are pretty good at violin playing. And after one year, you will already see a lot of results. But what most people would say is mastery. You have to be better than to play nicely. You have to be able to play violin concertos. And that takes, for most people, at least five years to reach that type of level. Is the violin really hard is the next question. That ties nicely into the last question. I would say yes, absolutely. Learning music is truly a very time intensive thing to do. And... I'm not sure if I motivate people to stay on this channel by saying so, but I do think it is a very difficult hobby. And a lot of you will have already have realized this. I mean, if you have ever tried to learn how to play a musical instrument, a lot of people are quite, quite... Mm, in the beginning, they get discouraged because they realize how hard it is and how much time it's going to take. And that is also why a lot of people quit in the beginning, because they, they think, oh yeah, I will learn these instruments, but they don't truly see what the commitment is that goes into learning an instrument. Or an, also, it needs a fair amount of, you know, I don't know, uh, consistency, commitment, and maybe even a little discipline to truly learn how to play an instrument. But at the same time, I think that is also what a lot of musicians are naturally drawn to. We are drawn to challenges and to maybe learning something which seems really, really hard. We like to challenge ourselves. And I think, please let me know in the comments if you like to challenge yourselves, because I feel like a lot of you do actually, otherwise you wouldn't be learning the violin. So there are a lot of easier hobbies. I do feel like learning music in general is very difficult for most people. 
learning the violin is even more difficult for most people because the violin is harder than piano in the beginning. I mean, it does sound nice after one year if you play the piano. It normally doesn't sound very nice after one year if you play the violin. I mean, not for, you know, compared to what you would like to hear. It does sound a lot better than after one month though. But yes, so this would be my answer. Yes, it is really hard. And uh, I also wrote a blog post why violin is so hard. You can look it up, violin inspiration, why the violin is hard, and you will find my answer to it. How to produce a good sound? My sound isn't super scratchy, but it is not very sharp and nice. Sometimes I accidentally play like nice, but not always. <laughs> that is so funny that you refer to yourself as playing nicely accidentally. <laughs> but um, when it sounds scratchy and sharp, I would think that normally if it sounds sharp, you either play very close to the bridge and you get this type of sound. Uh, or you press very much into the bow and you bow too quickly. Then it sounds sharp. So then in that case, bow in the middle, slowly and carefully. And a lot of the sound, that is also my answer to the question, is the bowing. Basically, the sound that you hear, how the notes sound, is almost only dependent on how you use the bow. So if there's a sound problem, you can try three things. And by the way, I will link under this video my contact point guide, because there's a, I created a free guide on this. And this basically shows all the elements that go into creating a nice tone on every part of the of the instrument and the bow. I will not go in depth into it. You can just read it in the guide. But basically, you have a few things that you can adjust. First is the position on the fingerboard, called the contact point. Closer to the bridge, it is louder. Closer to the fingerboard, softer. In the middle would be ideal in the beginning. Then you can bow quickly or slowly or very quickly. And I would say try the middle, <laughs> not too quick, not too slow and experiment with it. So if it doesn't sound nice, try to bow a little quicker, a bit slower and see if you have a positive result. Then you have the pressure. You have a lot of pressure or too much or too little. And you have to find the balance there. So if your tone doesn't sound good, adjust the pressure adjust the how fast you bow, adjust where you bow, and make sure to bow parallel to the bridge. So not like this, oh, so not like this, or like this, but always bow parallel to the bridge. So if you would imagine there's a line from the bridge downwards, the bow should follow that line exactly. I also created a blog post. I wrote a blog post on it called How Violin Scratchy Sound. So if you look on Google for Violin Inspiration Scratchy Sound Violin, you will probably find that blog post. And um, yeah, have a look at that blog post as well, because it goes into all the details of why a scratchy sound could appear, because it can be a lot. Let's go to the next question. I'm a self-learning beginner. Any tips and suggestions? Whoa, that's a lot. I mean, there's so much I could, I could suggest as a self-learning beginner. So first of all, I think let's think about mistakes that a lot of people that only self-learn make. I would say that is not to go into new techniques, to only play songs. So first of all, Make sure to also practice techniques, etudes and skills. And secondly, also challenge yourself with new techniques and gradually search for more difficult songs. So for instance, don't always play some folk tunes. I mean, of course you can if you would like that, if you only like to learn folk. By all means, play only folk. But if you would like to improve and get better, try to play a folk tune and then try a classical tune and then try something else, you know, try to experiment with a lot of different styles and a lot of different pieces of music to really make you into to make sure that you become a very well-rounded player with a lot of different techniques that you can use so yes that is what i would recommend and for instance if you master straight bow strokes learn slurred and then at some point learn up in a piece of course, it does help to follow uh, the guidance of a teacher because they will choose pieces for you that gradually challenge you. And I can recommend, of course, my school, Julia's Violin Academy. 
because this is a perfect combination of like self-learning, but still getting the support of the teacher. I have a step-by-step -step program where you basically get more difficult pieces with every level that you go up. There's a whole level system. And then you can also ask for teacher's feedback. So that would be something between taking formal lessons, you know, and, and uh, doing it by yourself. You can still study a lot by yourself, but you can still ask for feedback and get teacher support whenever you would like. But yeah, that would be my general tips is to keep challenging yourself with new techniques. Don't make it too difficult. Oh, another very important point. A lot of beginners start with Spring from Vivaldi. I mean, not the easy version on my channel, but the hard version. I mean, don't think that after six months you can play Bach, uh, Partidas or something like that. I mean, that will really discourage you. So also choose pieces of the right difficulty level. And that is hard if you don't have a teacher, but you can, it can be done. On my website, I also created a difficulty level ranking. So if you go to all the videos that I created, all the free videos, then you can click on the level and you can choose the level. So start with the easiest level and then slowly go up. Like truly make sure that you don't take pieces that are too hard and also not pieces that are too easy. That is making a big difference, I think, in your improvement. Okay, let's go to the next question. Classical pieces for beginners that are not very popular. Wow. I mean, I of course know a lot of popular pieces. So I like the pieces of... Oh, I have to remember what it's called. I'm teaching those in Julius Violin Academy. And I quite like them and they are nice for beginners. I, I will look them up right now. Give me a moment. Yes, I found it. Okay, it is um, Pieces of Pracht. I think they are quite nice and they are quite easy to play. And they are also not well known, at least. M many people don't play them. I also think a lot of well-known pieces are well known because they are pretty nice. Like a lot of but 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 yes you asked for for pieces that i don't know also have a look at imzop.org it is a website with a lot of free classical music and you will find really weird pieces that no one has ever heard of and you know like uh, you can learn it on the website okay next question do you have any advice for a 13 year old teen boy who wants to become a conductor when he grows up? What does he need to prepare? Ooh, I would t take classes with a conductor. <laughs> and I also think violin is a very useful instrument to learn. I know that a lot of the conductors that I had either have played the violin or tried to learn the violin because violin is such an important instrument in the orchestra. So it is pretty useful to be able to play the violin yourself. So I would say violin is a useful instrument, but I think also piano is a very useful instrument for a conductor because you have to be able to play the parts and like see how the parts go together. So I would say those are the two instruments to learn. And then the third thing is to ask for advice from a real conductor because I am not where you would like to be. And please listen to those people who achieved what you would like to achieve because in the end, they will know best what the right path towards it is and not anyone else. So please ask people that know about it and don't let people that don't know anything about it discourage you from your dream. Because I think sometimes people can say like, oh, you cannot do it anyway. But please ask people who actually know about the profession because a lot of people think that things cannot be done because they wouldn't be able to do it. But maybe you can <laughs> with the right help. So get help from a real conductor and ask him or her for support and how to learn it. And it can be a local, you can start with maybe a local choir conductor to take some basic lessons in conducting and then you can continue and so on. Oh, one more important part for becoming a conductor, I think, would be to listen to a lot of music of the type of music that you would like to conduct because you get a lot more musicality by listening to a lot of music. Good luck becoming a conductor, by the way. <laughs> I hope you will achieve your dream. And if so, please let me know. <laughs> So next one, will you ever make a full beginners to pro violin guide? Yes, I did it. Julia's Violin Academy, juliasviolinacademy.com. Next one, 
what is the difference between Suzuki and the older style of learning and doing exams? I don't know if that is the older style. Is, is ABRSM and Trinity the older style than Suzuki? I'm not sure what, uh, I would say Suzuki is also very old. <laughs> And Trinity, I'm not sure exactly again when it was founded, but I would say that it was after Suzuki, but I'm not sure of this. I mean, uh, Trinity and AB Arzam, Arzam are exam institutions. They are very popular in England and some other countries, but they, they are not necessarily the only way to learn the violin. I mean, I never did any violin exam. I didn't do uh, ABRSM exam or Trinity exams. And a lot of people in Europe never do these exams. I mean, UK is not a part of Europe anymore, I guess. I know in India, it's also very popular. A lot of people take these exams. So yes, it is not needed at all in order to learn the violin. And uh, also Suzuki, you know, it is just one method. But I think a lot of teachers will take a lot of pieces from different methods and not necessarily focus on only one method. So what is the difference between it? So I think Suzuki focuses a lot on pieces. In every piece you will learn new techniques and these techniques will be taught through small exercises belonging to the piece. And it is quite hard to learn Suzuki without the teacher because the books only show the pieces, but the teachers know which exercises are needed and what are the most important parts of every song. And the Suzuki method also does a lot by ear. So you get a very good ear. Your sheet music reading skills won't be as good. I learned with Suzuki when I was younger and uh, my sheet music skills were very bad. <laughs> When I was 12 or something like that, I still couldn't read sheet music, even though I was pretty good at violin playing by that point. So yes, it, it, it has benefits and downsides of the learning by ear method. I do think in the end it, does, it did help me, but I don't think it was necessarily the method, but it was more the teacher that helped me. I don't think, don't, uh, I would say don't try to follow only one method because in the end, you know, there's so many pieces. There's no one way to learn the violin. And normally teachers will take things from a lot of methods. And then the Trinity or ABRSM exams, they focus a lot more. I think they are a little bit more holistic. They take every part of violin playing. So you also have the ear training parts and you have sheet music reading and the pieces. Um, yeah, I, I, personally quite like their approaches, Trinity and ABRSM, because they truly try to create a guide which en encompasses everything that you need to learn music. And they both integrated Suzuki songs and also other songs. So I quite like this approach, actually. I haven't learned it in this way, but I think I would have liked it <laughs> to learn it in this way. I hope that was a good answer. I feel like that was a bit like a rambly answer <laughs> to this question. Maybe because I'm not a big fan of violin methods and I feel like a lot of my followers, they are so focused on only this one method. And, you know, if you go to the next song of this method, you are improving. But if you learn another song at the site, you are not improving. But that's not the case. You always improve when you're practicing. And there's a lot of songs that can help you improve, not only one specific method. Okay, next question. This time I will try to give a more positive answer. Music history. Is it important to learn music history? I would say yes and no. No, in case you would like to become quite a good violin player, you don't really have to learn music history in order to become pretty good at violin playing. But yes, in case you would like to become really good at violin playing in the classical style, because I do think you need to understand some things about history and the time pieces were written in to truly play them well. And especially about, you know, what were the common, common playing conventions of that time and how was music from that time played. That is important to know. And also I do think that it is recommended to learn music history because it makes you appreciate classical music differently. You start to hear things that you previously didn't hear. I think history is fascinating. Like if you understand what something is coming from, I feel like you get a deeper understanding of whatever it is. Like, I mean, can you become a ecologist and know everything about plants without knowing every anything about evolution? Probably you could, but I do think you can appreciate sometimes with a depth 
like that you know this plant was like coming from this you know like this this line before you, you know what i mean like the there's this whole process that created in the end this plant and if you know something about that you will appreciate it on a different level so yes i do think it is worth it but i wouldn't say it is necessarily needed if your goal is to become a great or great maybe not but to become a pretty good violin player next question i was asking if you can help me to learn how to compose any new song on the violin i would say i could i could help you but it's a big question for q a so maybe that is more like something i could do a course on one day to start composing a song i would say you have to understand a little bit about chords and i think in the best case you also learn how to play piano a bit and you learn about chord theory because you need to know something about chords in order to compose so that would be your first step i could tell you your first step and the second thing is to learn how to improvise on the violin because improvisation is the basis of creating new material next question how can one know he or she has moved from the beginner to the intermediate level? Well, there is no set boundaries. A beginner and intermediate is, a, you know, there's a range of levels. And just like there's country borders, like you can say like, oh, this is the Netherlands and this is Germany. I mean, it is an artificial it is an artificial line and the line between beginner and intermediate is artificial and will be different for everyone. I mean, maybe for some players, it could be intermediate to play the reading concerto that, uh, but for other players that could be beginner and intermediate would be to play Mozart concertos and advanced would be to play Sibelius concerto. Maybe some that are playing Sibelius concerto and Paganini caprices would even say that Mozart is uh, beginner level. It's, it doesn't, I mean, th there is no one way to define it. But then you could ask, how do I define it? And I would say, I feel like my student has entered the intermediate phase. If the student starts to play in higher positions, is using vibrato in their pieces, they are playing music with musicality, not only playing the notes, but they, they, they are playing it with more feeling behind it and uh, subtlety you know not only feeling the same the entire piece but dynamics and you know playing a little bit slower and a bit faster and louder and softer and so on but but it is pretty hard to say and of course your technique is getting better so you play for instance most of the notes pretty much in tune and you know some of the basic bowing techniques so that is how i would define intermediate but yes, I, I know that it is different for everyone. I mean, if I would compare myself to Itzhak Perlman, I would be considered intermediate or maybe even beginner. <laughs> so it doesn't even, you know, there it depends on what you're, you compare yourself with if you are an intermediate or a beginner player. But this is how I define it in my group of students. And I would say a lot of people do not reach the intermediate phase that starts. A lot of people don't learn to play violin concertos in like third position and uh, adding vibrato and so on. So if you reach that phase, I do think you can call yourself intermediate and you can be pretty proud of your accomplishment. Next question. Can we really come to the camp adult beginner violinist? <laughs> so I am thinking this question is about my violin camp, Violin Villa. And yes, this camp is truly meant for beginners. Like last time we did it, there were a lot of people who are not great at violin playing, but they do love to play. And there's three levels at the camp. So if you come, you can choose your own level. And I can also advise you which level to choose. But there is like the very basic level of those who just started. And then you have the more advanced level for those who are already playing for a little longer. And uh, there were also a few players who are pretty advanced already in the camp, but most are truly beginners. So yes, the, you can truly come as a beginner player. The next question is, have you noticed that people who are left-handed learn faster? No. I haven't. I do think right-handed people have a lot of benefits because the right hand has the bow and the bow is really hard. I think the bow is harder than the 
the bow's harder than the left hand at some point. So I do think right-handed players have a benefit there. But of course, left-handed players might have a benefit on the left side. I have not experienced it as I'm not a left player. But no, I didn't notice any particular difference between left and right-handed players when I was teaching the violin so far. Next question, how can I practice vibrato and how long does it take? So for most people that I have taught, it takes about six weeks to get the basic vibrato motion and some of them can already play vibrato by that time and some need a little longer. And with six weeks, I do mean like daily practice. So yeah, that is how long it takes for many of my students to learn vibrato. But you have to be very careful and do the right practice routine and do it every single day and be very diligent and disciplined about it because you cannot practice vibrato one day and then not play it for one week and then play it again and then expect that you know how to play vibrato by week six. You need to follow a structured program and uh, work with the teacher and know exactly what you're doing or have made your own program. Then you need to do a lot of research to find out exactly what you need to do. Okay, next question. In what Suzuki violin book do you start learning shifting? Oh, I have to remember that. I think the first piece where you shift is Humoresque from Dvorak. I think it is in book two. I think there you already do a shift, but I'm not sure. Otherwise, Vivaldi is a piece where you shift in the Suzuki books, but I would have to look up in which books those are, but you can find it out yourself. Humoresque, I think you have some shifting in the piece. Maybe it is also, yeah, check it out yourself in what piece, the in which uh, book this piece is, but you can find it out by looking in the books, of course. Hi, when will you organize a violin camp for amateur adults again? Good question. I'm not sure. I thought that I would like to do it this summer, but I'm also a bit afraid of COVID pandemic. It, it is very hard for me because if I book the location, I cannot get a refund of the location. And uh, last time what happened is I booked the entire location and then I couldn't hold the camp. So I had to pay for the location, but I couldn't hold the camp. So basically it was a lot of losses for, from my side and we are not a big company so it is not easy for me to handle that again. So I'm still in doubt if I dare to organize it this year because that I'm afraid that what if people won't come again and uh, there is some lockdown that would be very scary you know. So I'm still in doubt about it but if a lot of you would like me to organize it maybe I will. <laughs> And uh, in that case, if you would like to get the updates about the violin camp, please subscribe to my email newsletter because there I always send people the update. And normally if I do organize it, the places are away pretty quickly because there's not a lot of spaces. And I didn't do it now for a while, so I can imagine that places will fill up pretty quickly. So be sure to be subscribed to my newsletter so you always get the latest news and be able to you know, enter the camp as soon as I organize it. So now let's go to the next question. Am a beginner violinist. Is it normal for the neck to ache at first? Do experienced violinists experience it too? Or have they grown used to it? Numb. <laughs> I think that is a funny question, but it is true that a lot of fine players that I know, including myself, are in pain. <laughs> a lot of them have pain. It is very, very common because you are just always doing a weird motion with your neck. But I do think you can prevent it for a big part by not practicing too long, having a great shoulder rest position and doing a lot of exercises. So it does help me a lot if I, for instance, also do like uh, exercising and yoga and have a good shoulder rest position, I do notice a big difference. And you have to stand up straight and not sit while you practice, but stand up. That also helps a lot. And yes, it is normal, but for a beginner, I also notice that sometimes their neck is hurting just because they are like, putting so much pressure on their neck. So they're always like, you know, like holding it very tightly with their chin and the whole neck is tensing up. Or you are so stressed when you're playing that your neck starts tensing up. So relax, try to relax and make sure that you can hold your violin really, really easily without like too much pushing, you know? You don't have to push like very hard, just a bit of pushing so that it just doesn't fall is enough. 
Next question, if I may ask, is a crafted violin nice for me to buy? So a hound crafted violin, I would say yes, absolutely. Those are the nicest violins that you can get, uh, handmade violins. I bought this violin, it is also a handmade violin. I bought it second hand. Second hand, you can find a lot of handmade violins and you can get pretty good deals. Okay, we came to the end of this Q&A video. Did you like it? Please give me a thumbs up. If you have any questions left, please write them in the comments below. If I missed your question, you can still write them below. There will probably be another Q&A in the future. So if there's any questions you still have, please post them below. And one day I will organize another Q&A and I will read the questions that you have posted here. So thank you so much everybody for letting me know about your questions. It was fun to do this Q&A. I'm a bit tired now, I have to be honest, because of talking so long for a camera. But I am pretty, pretty happy to know that on the other side of this camera are some real people like you watching this video and this gives me the energy to, to talk to a camera. <laughs> okay, thank you so much everybody for watching. If you would like to see my next video, please subscribe to the channel. Next week we will continue with our regular violin lessons, weekly violin lessons on the channel. Good luck practicing this week. Don't forget to practice a little after watching this video. Don't stay on YouTube too long. Okay, good luck. Bye bye.